gospel came to Africa, you know, we had our culture. We had the way we do things, you know. We had the way we handle matters. Now, now that the gospel came, when the gospel came, people are having an encounter with Jesus, following Bible patterns. Now, and a lot of people are getting confused. They are getting confused on, do we still follow the way of culture, you know? And when we talk about culture, culture has, uh, um, uh, what do I say? Culture has different uh, patterns too. Now, we have greeting culture. We have marriage culture. We have uh, culture for uh, respect of a, a title culture. We have culture for how to handle the uh, uh, aged. Uh, uh, am I communicating? We have family kind of culture and things like that. So let's start with Romans chapter 13 and verse 7. We now go back to read that same Romans 13, 1 to 7. But let's take verse 7 first. Romans 13, verse 7. Now look at what the Bible says here. It says, render therefore to all their dues. Look at this. Render therefore to all their dues. Now, th- taxes to whom taxes are due. Now, I want to hear you. Give everyone his due. He now said here, yeah, custom to whom custom, fear to whom fear, honor to whom honor. To whom fear, honor, to whom honor. Now, follow this reading very well. Render therefore to all their dues, which means everyone, you give them what is, uh, uh, is due to them. He said to those that you need to pay taxes to, pay tax. To those whom uh, you need to give custom to, pay custom to them. To those you need to give fear to, give them fear. To those you need to give honor to, give them honor. Now, when I started meditating over this scripture, I was also led to go back again from verse 1. You know, you don't just pick a verse out of, you know, uh, it's just like somebody was talking for one hour and you just pick out one statement from within one minute. No, let's go back to verse 1. Now, Paul was saying something before he got to verse 7. Now, it says, let every soul be subject to what? To the governing authorities. For there is no authority except from God. And the authorities that exist are what? Appointed by God. Either elected, either appointed by man. No one can get into the position of leadership without God's backing. So the Bible is now saying, when people are in charge, give them honor. Now, let's go forward. Therefore, whoever resists the authority, resists the ordinance of God. Whoever resists the authority... And those who resist will bring judgment on themselves. Verse 3. For rulers are not a terror to good works, but to evil. Do you want to be unafraid of authorities? Look at the question. In our answer, do what is good and you will have praise from the same. Verse 4. Verse 4. For he is God's minister to you for good. But if you do evil, be afraid, for he does not bear the sword in vain. For he is God's minister, an avenger to execute wrath on him who practice evil. Now, those that go contrary to law. Therefore, you must be subject, not only because of wrath, but also for conscience, which means you must do the right thing, not because of punishment alone, but because of your conscience, uh, for the sake of your conscience. Let's move on. Let's move on. Verse 6. For because of uh, this, you, you also pay taxes, for they are God's ministers according to, uh, sorry, uh, sorry, attending continually to this very thing. Now, can you see that he was saying something? He now got to verse 7 that we read. He said, now give to everyone. Because as at that time, when people were giving their life to Christ, they believed that, like we all know, heaven is our home. We are binded by scriptures. Now, people now started living their life as they want. Ah, you can't take tasks from you. You can't take tasks from you. God is my father. I'm not subject to your government. God is the one that determines my life. Now, Paul just had to address that issue. That see, believers, yes, heaven is our home. The earth is our passage. But while you are in the passage, there are what we call constituted authorities. Now, Paul was now explaining to the Romans church that as a Christian, 
you must learn to follow order of those who are constituted as authorities. So when we talk about the issue of culture, maybe different tribes we came from. Now, I'm a Yoruba man. Some of you are from different parts of this nation. We have cultures that are normal cultures. Now, and we have cultures that have what we call demonic undertone. I will explain. Now, when we talk about normal cultures, you know, there are cultures we have in our families, in our, in our towns. You know, for instance, now, we are Yorubas. We have greeting culture. Now, and if you see somebody that is an elderly person, what do we do? We prostrate to greet. Being born again doesn't change that. Hello? Now, you can't say, because I'm born again, I will not prostrate to greet anyone again. No, 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 no. That one is a simple culture. Now, we have a family, uh, this family relative kind of culture in Africa. That's why we have cousins, we have stepbrothers, we have aunts. Now, over there you know, uh, abroad, they don't value relationship with, you just see that when somebody gets old, they carry the old person to uh, uh, old people's home and go and keep their, their mother. They may not even attend the funeral. But here we have this culture of respect that, ah, it's my mom, it's my dad. I have to, when I grow up, I have to take care of my old dad. I have to take care. Are you getting what I'm saying? Now, we have these cultures in Africa. These are natural cultures. We have culture that has to do with marriage in Africa. Yeah, you want to get married, you can't just go to the altar to, to, the, to any point of marriage without receiving consent from the parents. Right there abroad, somebody will just call the mom. Hello, mom. Hello, mom. I just got married 30 minutes ago. Ah, and the mom will not even ask. Or does not even know the man. He may just ask, then who is the lucky guy? He said, his name is Mr. Stone. I met Stone Board yesterday. And we got to the, to the registry today. We got married just 30 minutes ago. They, yes, it happens in America. They, get, they can meet yesterday, get married today. Let's, come on, I just feel in love with you. I'm so crazily in love with you. Let's go get married. Especially in Las Vegas. Now, in Las Vegas, they will tell you, there's a signboard. We used to watch it. They would just write, get married in three minutes. Within three minutes, you are done. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Now, that's why the rate of divorce over there is high. And to them, it does not matter. Somebody will divorce now. And the next minute, mom, mom, do you know I met Mr. Board yesterday after I broke up with Mr. Stone day before yesterday. And we just got married now. And the mom will say, I hope you find joy in this new marriage. Wow, I'm happy for you. He's in Nigeria. Ufem is about Tani Babae. You know, they will be that's our culture here. Are you getting what I'm saying? These cultures are does not have anything demonic. Are you getting what I'm saying? I'm talking showing you culture. Now, in our tribe, in our in our tribe, you know, there are things we celebrate in our tribe. There are things in our, our, our culture we celebrate. Now, and uh, the scripture is not, that's why I brought that verse 7. The Bible is not against the culture that does not have what we call demonic undertone. I will explain that one to us as I get there. So, being born again does not mean you should throw your culture away. No, 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 no. Somebody will say, there is no way it is written in the Bible that I should do like this. No, there's no way it is written in the Bible that I should greet anybody. Let honor be given to who it is due and custom to who it is due. You can't take somebody's daughter in our culture here without going to pay homage. They will ask you, who is your father? In fact, they will give you a list. One of my sons was sharing with me, he said, sir, the list they gave me, if I calculate everything together, is about 700,000. He said, so we are trying to beg my mother-in-law to bring it down or to convert it to cash. He said, my mother-in-law said, no, you must buy all these things. And I told him, I said, in their culture, you see all those, this, all those rapa, rapa, they say you should buy. They would like to be wearing it to women's meeting. Then you see the, the mothers will be saying, this is uh, Ngozi's uh, uh, rapa, the one uh, her husband bought for me. That, that's their culture. The Bible is not against normal culture. Here, you are not answering me. You can do better than that. 
So I noted, if you look at this scripture, you will see that the Bible is not against our culture. To understand it better, like just like I said, we have read verse 1 to 7. Look at verse 8 as well. Show me verse 8. Verse 8 of that same um, um, Romans chapter 13. Verse 8 says, look at it clearly. He said, Oh no man, anything except to love one another. For he who loves another has fulfilled the law. He said, make sure, as he was saying it, don't owe anybody anything. Make sure you pay everything that you owe everyone. Which means, fulfill the cultures that are normal. Now, I will now go deeper as we explain. Number two, does it mean that as a Christian, I should follow everything that our culture requires? The answer is no. The reason is because some cultures have demonic undertone. They can allow demons to have access to your life if you follow them. There are some cultures that if you don't take time to prayerfully investigate, it can introduce demons to your life. Now, for instance, I'll give some examples. I was listening to mommy Funke Adejumo. He said her husband come from a royal family that when women... When they get, they get married, on the wedding night, the women will dress like male hunters. On my wash all day. Male hunters, they will put on kembe trousers and agbada. Then some people will come and welcome them at the entrance of the house. They will make some incantations. Now, this woman said, when they got married, they were planning to get married, they didn't count it to be anything. They obeyed. She wore the cloth. He said, but after their marriage, she discovered that they weren't getting, she wasn't getting pregnant. And her husband is a pastor. So while they were now praying around, talking to God, asking God questions, the Spirit of God now said, that culture you followed on that day of your wedding initiated you into a kingdom that made you a man. That you will not be pregnant unless you break that yoke. So Mommy Funke said, she and her husband, they entered into several series of prayer and fasting to broke the yoke. Then she was pregnant. As she got pregnant, she said her, her mother-in-law came and said, in our culture, once a woman is pregnant and she delivers, she must not eat anything that has palm oil on the day of delivery and must not eat anything that has salt. No palm oil, no salt on the day of delivery. And they must cook for her a goosey soup without palm oil a goosey soup with that salt and she must eat it as a first meal. They said they had. Now, the, the, the husband is a prince. She said that night as she delivered, before the husband called the mom, he had gone to buy food and he told her, phone care, oh yeah, quickly eat this food before my mom, I will call my mom that we have delivered. She said she quickly ate the food and as they called the mom, hello mommy, Funke just put to bed a bouncing baby. He said, tell her, tell her, she must not eat anything you know, they said they have had. She must not taste anything, you know, that according to tradition, she must eat a goosey and a mala. The goosey must not have pepper and must not have so, uh, a palm oil and salt. He said they have had. So he said, within a few hours, mama came. I hope you have not eaten anything. I hope you have not eaten anything. He said, yes, we have not eaten anything. Yes, we have not eaten. We have not eaten, we have not eaten ma. He said, and they put the food. The husband prayed, prayed for her, her, prayed over the food, and they ate. And nothing happened because she had broken it by eating something before that one came. Listen, it is not everything in your culture you have to follow. I will teach you how to refuse as we go on. How do I know this? Let's look at 1 Corinthians chapter 10, from verse 19 to verse 23. 1 Corinthians chapter 10, from verse 19 to verse 23. What am I saying then? That an idol is anything? That an idol is anything? Or what is offered to idol anything? Paul was speaking to the Corinthian church. Rather, that the things with the Gentiles sacrifice, hear me, they sacrifice to who? To demons and not to God. And I do not want you to have fellowship with what? With demons. That Paul was telling them at the first, at the beginning, that see, if you eat food sacrifice to an idol, is nothing because idol is nothing. Idol is ordinary wood, ordinary stone. But as he was teaching them to a point, he now said, "Wait, let me teach these people to understand 
that most of these sacrifices you see that people are making were not ordinary sacrifices. They are being sacrificed to demons. And these demons, you know, when they are sacrificed to them, they come in with covenants. That's why it's not every law you follow. You say, ah, in our father's house, so before a, a, a woman will be brought into the home, we will have to kill chicken, pour the blood on the floor, she will step on the blood to enter into the house. These things have demonic undertone. That's why some people are still fighting some battles up till now. Some people will say, ah, you don't understand, sir. You don't understand, sir. Every son of this of our family, every year, January 1st, we have to gather together in a place so that our father will pray for us. Do I'm born again? I don't want to offend them. You know, I just have to. I will teach you how to undo things like this. So here, let's finish the reading. We we'll stop at verse 23. What verse are we? Now look at. He said, you cannot drink the cup of the Lord and the cup of demons. You cannot partake of the Lord's table and of the table of demons. 22. Or do we provoke the Lord to jealousy? Are we stronger than he? 23. The last one before I continue. All things are lawful for me, but not all things are helpful. All things are lawful for me, but not all things edify. So I want culture, I want a shakonwa. Kintu fi yobasha la ye culture a shalanke. To yake a shalua ni shugban oni demon. Oh, oh, oni. Oh, man, she le kunfu o kunku. La tira ye wano a ye wa. You can't just carry out everything. Now let's let's go on. You know how the devil uh sorry, you know how the devil subtly creeps into places. He used men to introduce into uh uh sorry, he used men to introduce a uh, demonic way of lives into to our lives. That's using demon uh, bringing up cultures. Now, these cultures give access to the devil. So People didn't know that some of our fathers that made some of these agreements that some of you say in our family we don't used to eat this. In our family we don't used to do this. In our family this is how we behave. In our family this is how we do things. You didn't find out. And most times you will see that most of these people that want to lure you into following all kinds of culture, we now quote Matthew 17 from verse 25 to 27. What will they tell you? Give unto Caesar what belongs to Caesar's. And the idea of Kisari from Kisari, that's what they quote. Why not give unto Caesar what belongs to Caesar? If what we worship in our family is masculine, give it unto them now. That's what they will quote. But you should actually know that that was not the actual meaning of what Jesus was saying. They met him on the road. They said, ah, tax. You have not paid tax. And the disciples asked, are we going to pay tax? And Jesus said to him, whose portrait is on that money? They said it is Caesar's. Now, it's just like the money that you see here. Whose portrait is here? We find there. Uh, is it Evan Koku that is here or what? Uh, Alaji, Aliyah, whatever. Ali, Ali Baderu, and uh, who is the second one? Dr. Clement Isong. Now he said, whose money? Whose faces are there? They say it's Caesar's. Let's give to Caesar's our taxes. That's what Jesus meant. He is not saying you should go and join them in idol worship. Say here. Are you learning something out there? Now, let's now go deeper. How can I know the culture that has demonic undertone? How? How can I know the culture that has demonic undertone? How? Listen, it will contradict your faith. Any culture, it will contradict your faith. One of us were, was sick. One, one of our members here was sick many years ago. And her husband called her by name and told her that, well, in our town, where we used to worship so-so and so thing, the husband now said to her, eh, they said they, they called from the shrine that so that you will not die, you should, you should come and do some sacrifices. And she came to meet me and said, Papa, what do I do? I said, you don't have to do it. Your money is equal to you. The money in your hand and you is the same. That's why you see that when people go to Abali's house, you say, do what? put money, pay, bring money from your pocket and speak to it. Now, when you now bring money from your pocket, you speak to the money, you put it on their, their what do they call that thing? 
I don't know the English name of that thing. Now, when they put it on that thing, you will see that they will, they will conjure and you'll be shocked. That uh, herbalist will begin to say what you spoke to that money. Listen, you have to be careful of any culture that contradicts your faith. I shared one experience with you now. I went for a family meeting of recent. And one of the eldest son saw me. Hey, Afolabi. Hey, praise God, oh. Our daddy's son. Because my daddy used to be the eldest when others died. And he has gone to be with the Lord. Hey, Afolabi is here. This Afolabi is here. So they took an energy drink. I don't think energy drink. I don't take energy drink. Because me, that's one thing with me. I read the content. What they mix together before I take anything. And I discover that there are some things they use that is dangerous to the heart. So I don't take, I've never drank it before in my life. Any energy, energy drink, I don't drink it. Like this one that some of you just been drinking, you are endangering your heart. So this elderly man now said, he took one of the drinks, he opened it, he tasted it, he gave it to another elder, that one tasted it, he gave it to another elder, that one tasted it, and they passed it to me. I said, I'm sorry, I don't drink it. Ah, pastor, it's a, it's a drink of unity. I said, I don't drink. If you take Coke, I will take Coke. But Jema Binu, I'm sorry, I, can't, I don't take this kind of drink. He now pressure on me. I said, Jema Binu, it's not disrespect. Okay, give me malt. I will take malt, but I don't take this. And they left me. That has demonic undertone. In my father's town, in my mom's town, my mom is from the east. They have one festival, they call it Epe. It's a masquerade. Now, that masquerade, they do it once a year. Every first of the year, the masquerade will down round the town. And all the people in the town we, we gather together. They used to call that place Amma. That's it's a big field. So the masquerade will be dancing from house to house, house to house, house to house. And they'll be asking, is Ekwe here? That's in Hebrew language. They will ask, when they get to this combat, is Ekwe here? They will say, it's here. Oh. If they don't answer, it will whip them like. Now, after dancing around from house to house in that town, people will be following the masquerade to the, uh, to the uh, town field. Now, in that town field, there's a ram they will have bought tied to a rope. They will not, some people will now take the leg at the back, some will hold the hands and stretch it, somebody will pull the neck. That masquerade will now come to give one cut that will bring the head of the ram down. If he successfully cut it once, the whole, they will shoot, pow, you know, and they will shoot seven times. Then they will say, ah, the sacrifice has been accepted, though. then the people of the town will begin to celebrate demonic undertone. How can I know the culture that, that has demonic undertone? It will contradict your faith. It will in one way or the other go against biblical instruction. It will one, in one way or the other go against biblical instruction. It will in one way or the other require that you follow instructions that goes against the ways of the God you serve. Now, these are things you can use to know. They will give you an instruction. In one way, they may tell you that you see in our town, after our marriage, all the way, ladies will go and bath at the social and so market before they have sex with their husband. Are you getting what I'm saying? You pay attention to things like this. These ones are no longer culture. They have become demonic. I was, I was watching one... Uh, it happens in Brazil. It's a small village in Brazil. They say they don't believe in that town that when people die, they die because of their time. When they die, they believe that it's the enemy that killed them. And in their culture, they believe that 
Anybody I die, the whole villagers will eat the meat of the person. So once the person dies, they will pieces the meat, all of them will eat, they will, not, they will now dry the bones of the person. After seven days, they will grind the bone, use it to cook pepper soup. Yeah, you will grind it to powder, use it to cook pepper soup, and everybody in the village will come and have a share. They say they believe that the spirit of the person will now be in all of them. The spirit will not die. Now, I'm showing you cultures with demonic undertone. That's why you see some people will now be praying, 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 praying. They don't know why they can't have breakthrough. What about in, uh, uh, in a quiet bomb state? When if you, if you have a fiancé that somebody you are dating, they know in the family and the person die, you have to marry that person before they bury. It's one culture too. And demonic spirit uses all these things. Praise the Lord. I didn't hear you. So it's in one way or the other. We are looking at how to know it. Require you follow instructions that goes against the ways of the Lord. Now imagine they are telling you that in our culture, if your brother should die, it is a must for you to marry his wife. You know there are some cultures like that. And some people still believe in it. Some Christians still believe in it. They'll be waiting. Ah, see, 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 but I'm about to say, I'm And the wife too will be saying, ah, well, but I'm about to say, since your, uh, that person's brother is dead, so they say you must not leave that family. These are cultures that have demonic undertone. Even when scripture says you should not marry your close relative. Say here. I didn't hear you. I didn't hear you. You can do better. This was exactly what happened to Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. They introduced a culture in Babylon that says once a trumpet is blown, everybody bow down. And these three men said, it contradicts our faith. In our faith, it says that we do not bow to any other God except the living God. If I now begin to bow to this idol, it has contradicted my faith. So this is how to know cultures with demonic undertone. Haven't you heard, heard of families where they will tell you that when you get married, before you sleep with your wife, the priest will first sleep with her. In Africa here, <laughs> there are different, different kinds of cultures. Different kinds. But understand that the only culture that you should follow is the ones that does not have demonic on their thumb. Now let's now go further. Because of time. How should I undo it when custom contradicts my faith? How? How should I undo it when custom contradicts my faith? Now, I won't give one direct answer we are going to look at three cases because there are some cases eh, that are, needs wisdom. Hello? There are some cases that need wisdom. Oh. Do you know that there are some cultures that you cannot marry before your senior? In Africa, they will tell you, go wait, your brother never marry. And your brother, that brother is still struggling at 43. Yeah, oh, what? They say, no, you can't go ahead of your brother. Oh. And brother is telling you, it go better, it go better. For the three years, it go better, it go better. And you, the younger brother, you are going to 40. You are waiting for your egg more. When culture contradicts your faith, how should you undo it? Now, some of you, you are from families where some of the worship idols, some of them are of the other faith, and you want to get married. And they are telling you, no, no. I am your father. I am a you are going to, I'm going to join you in front of my shrine. I've had cases, oh, I'm your father, I'm your father, I'm a Muslim, it, I, I don't want to see any pastor here. 
How should we undo it when culture, my culture, my custom contradicts my faith? Let's learn from the first one, the case of Naaman the Syrian. 2 Kings chapter 5, 16 to 19. 2 Kings chapter 5, 16 to 19. 2 Kings chapter 5, 16 to 19. Now look at this. Let's all look at this scripture. But he said, as the Lord lives before whom I stand, I receive nothing. And he urged him to take it, but he refused. Naaman was begging uh, Elijah to take something. Elijah said no. But he said, now next verse, next verse, next verse. Thank you. So Naaman said, then, where am I? Then if not, you are not thinking anything. Please let your servant be given two more loaves of earth, for your servant will no longer offer either burnt offering or sacrifice to other gods but the Lord. I'm making up my mind. I will not offer anything to any other god but your God, Elisha. Verse 18. He said, yet, I have this case. In this thing, may the Lord pardon your servant. When my master goes into the temple of Rimon to worship there, and he leans on my hand, and I bow down in the temple of Rimon. When I bow down in this temple of in the temple of Rimon, may the Lord please pardon your servant in this thing. Now look at the case of Naaman. Wait, don't go to the next one. Wait. Look at the case of Naaman. Some of you, your case is like the case of Naaman. He was the army general of the land. He works directly under the king. Anytime the king is going to, and the king worship idol, he just had an encounter. He has decided he will serve the God of Elijah. Hello? Of Elijah, sorry. He now said, sir, Oga, me please, can I ask for one permission? My Oga used to worship idol, and he likes going there with me. Anytime he goes there to worship idol, my Oga cannot be bowing down, and me, I'm standing up. Hello? Now, can you see why you, you people too must learn ethics? I've not found time, eh? I will have prepared a message on ethics. Some people don't have ethics at all. Some of you, you are talking to your boss. Your hand is in your pocket. Yes, I, good morning, sir. I said I should tell you the report of what happened. Disrespect. I was training my staff at the level school. I said, see, how will your boss walk in and you are still sitting down? When your boss walk in, court see demands that you what? You stand up. So, this man was now saying, today is not day for ethics. He's now saying, oh God, when I bow down in such case, can God pardon me? I'm not bowing down because I'm worshipping that idol. Well, I don't have a choice because that is the only job I have. What did Elijah now said? Verse 19. Verse 19. Then he said to him, go in peace. So, he departed from him a short distance. Which means, Elijah what? Give him permission. Now look up. Do you know that some of you have made so many mistakes? I have seen Christians that went to resign from working in beauty. All in the name of, ah, I cannot be working in a, uh, we had the produce beer. It's a sinful place. I can't work there. It's a sin for me to work there. So they will go and resign and return to zero. There are cases where, hear me, your, your heart is not bowing, but you don't have a choice where you are. When my dad was still alive, he was a chronic Muslim. Do I led him to Christ at the point of death. The only festival that he does to gather all his children is the Muslim festival, Ilea festival. And he will gather all his children, all my children. I didn't want my father to curse me. Because when the Bible says, honor your father and mother that your days may be long, the Bible didn't put religion in front of it. Whether your father is a Christian, a witch, or a wizard, or a pastor. Bible just says, honor your father and mother that your days may be long and that it may be well with you. So if you don't honor them, your days cannot be long. If you don't honor them, it cannot be well with you. So that was the only festival my father had. So you know what? Every year... I go to the festival. 
Oh, ignore me and my brothers, my stepsisters, my uncles, my aunts. You know, greet everybody. Go to my dad. Prostrate. Greet him. When she see me, he'll be happy, pastor. You know? Do you know that the lack of wisdom has made so many Christians to become outcasts in their families? You didn't hear me. Now, can you imagine if when I gave my life to Christ, I told my dad, I'm born again, I cannot be in your festival, I don't want to, blah, 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 and I left. He, I would have become his enemy till his death. But because I kept attending, I was his friend. On his dying bed, I told him, Daddy, I've been telling you about Jesus. How far? He said, Pastor, I'm ready now. We used to have one brothers and sister. My wife will remember. In the fellowship where we were raised, their dad was an imam at Koyejo. I can't remember their names again. Ah, they beat these people like mad. My dad was a Muslim when I became born again. They used to force us to the mosque. I didn't say no. But when I get to the mosque, you know what I used to do? You know, you put your shoe like this outside the mosque. Our father, who art in heaven, I will need a hallow be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done in heaven. As it's not on earth. <laughs> I'm not as it's in heaven. Give us this day. They don't know what I was saying. And when they now continue to say, you know, there's a point you will sit down and you begin to count this thing. I'll be speaking in tongues. Naaman didn't have another job. That was the job he had. If he had said no, he said to the king, I won't follow you. They will kill him. So listen, when your, when your religion contradicts custom, in this particular one, you use wisdom. There's a place of wisdom. A pastor went to marry from Wari, and the dowry they gave him, I'm talking about Bishop Sholao Yenero, he told us his testimony. In Wari, they will write 50 liters of Ogogoro, two cartons of benzene and hedges cigarette. They, they mentioned the choice of their cigarette. As they got to the place, they say, the people in the town gather together. Where is our Ogogoro? And where is our benzene and hedges? He said, I'm a pastor. I cannot present it. He said, now Jesus will kill you. Oh, yeah? Send them out of this place. You know what, boys, they don't send them. When the thing was getting hot, bishop said, the bishop said, he asked one of the elder spokesmen, how much will these things cost? They told him the price. He gave them money. Hey, hey, they said, you don't start. You can't do like you decrease. He said, we know the good church. There's a place of wisdom. That brother and that sister, my wife, if you can remember their name, let me know. These brothers and sisters, They'll be telling their dad, their dad was an imam. We have received Jesus. We cannot go to mosque. We have received Jesus. We cannot do anything with you. The father will tie them to wood and beat them like mad. And we too, we didn't know anything that time. I was a brother in that fellowship. When he come, I said, brother, brother, keep the fire burning. Continue to suffer for Jesus. <laughs> ah, one no more. The father will go again and get this. They call this in Huntu. He said they should give them to drink. The brothers will say, no, no. They will beat them, beat them, beat them. It was when later in life, I, I didn't know whether the later backslide, that I discovered the scripture that says, even if I drink deadly poison, it will not harm me. If I, if I had been their pastor at that time, and I've known, what, I've known what I've known now, they will enjoy their ride in Christ. It is because most of us don't have, we don't handle these situations with wisdom. Look at what Naaman asked for. That sir, sir, I don't know. I've given my life to Jesus now. But sir, I don't know. My ogre, he worships idol. And he always wants me to go with him. So sir, sir, if he's bowing down, I cannot be standing. I too will bow. But you understand that I'm not bowing in my heart. So I'm only bowing to secure my job. We had one case like that in our church. One of our women. The husband came back and said, my herbalist wants to see you. Ah, she said, God forbid. 
I will never go to a herbalist place. In the name of Jesus. This my head is for Jesus. I will never go and buy down to anything. She was... <laughs> she said all kinds of things. And when she came to me, she said, Papa, look at what my husband is saying. The husband was hoping this marriage will end now. This will be the end of the marriage. She said, Papa, what do I do? I said, you will go. She looked at me. She said, ah, have you backslidden? I said, when the Ark of Covenant went to the temple of Dagon. What happened to it? At first, it fell down. They stood it up again. The next time, the neck and the arm got broken. I called her by name. I said, you are about to go and visit darkness. You are the light. When you wake up, when you get home tomorrow, tell your husband, you will follow him. Now look up. She got home and told the husband, I will follow you. Just as you follow me. You follow me. Ah! Ha! If you follow me, you see what I will do for you. As they got to the herbalist's house, the herbalist has been telling the man that his wife is a witch. That his wife is the reason why she is not prospering. As, and the herbalist didn't ever believe that a woman would come. As she entered the place, the herbalist bowed and said, Ah! I respect you, mother. So, yeah, oh. the husband was saying yes. He said the husband was saying yes. Musapa He said the abali said no. This woman is not a witch, oh. Young man, my shrine is telling me to tell you, you better bow down and beg this woman. You have offended her. It's her destiny that is fighting your progress. If she is not happy with you, you can never succeed. The man started begging from the abalis office was prostrating for her please forgive me please forgive me <laughs> imagine if there is no divine wisdom that would the man will have sent her out of the house and i me i'm not ready to take a second wife i don't even have a place where we put her where will she now be me i will be with my own wife who will she be with who will she be with where is where is jesus house no, where is Jesus' house, I should say? <laughs> the mosquito that is inside this church, if they visit you. <laughs> Hallelujah, church. I didn't hear you. So that man was under authority. He didn't have choice. So he, 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 he was told to apply wisdom. Listen, since he didn't have uh, another job, the advice meant, sorry, the advice uh, means that he was physically present at the idol's temple, but his heart was loyal to God. That was the conclusion of Elisha's advice. That's why you need to be wise. What do I say? You need to apply wisdom when it comes to cases like that. Let's go to another answer. Let's look at a second case because of our time. Another one happened again in Daniel chapter 1, 3 to 17. Daniel chapter 1 from verse 3. I will show you this one too. Now what question are we answering? How should I undo it when, excuse me, my culture contradicts my faith? Now, then the king instructed Asphanes, the master of his Enoch, to bring some of the children of Israel and some of the king's descendants and some of the nobles. Verse 4. Young men in whom there was no blemish, but good looking, gifted in all wisdom, possessing knowledge and quick to understand, who had ability to serve in the king's palace and whom they might teach the language and literature of the children. Verse 5. And the king appointed what? For them a daily provision of the king's delicacies, of the wine which he drank, and three years of training for them, so that at the end of that time they might serve before the king. Verse 6. Now, from among those of the sons of uh, Judah were Daniel, Hananiah, Michelle, and Nazariah. Yes. Yes. To them, the chief of the Enoch's gave names. He gave Daniel the name Belshazzar, to Hananiah, Shadrach, to Michelle, Meshach, and to Azariah, Abednego. He changed their names. But Daniel proposed in his heart, look at this, that he would not defile himself with a portion of the king's delicacies, 
nor with the wine which he drank. Therefore, he requested of the chief of the Enoch's that he might not defile himself. Now look at verse 9. That's where I want to pick my wisdom from. Now God had brought him, brought down a what? I didn't hear you. I didn't hear you. Into the favor and goodwill of the chief of the Enoch's. Now look up. How did Daniel escape this one? Because the food that was coming from the king's table was first dedicated to idols. And Daniel said, me, I will not eat it. Ah, I will not eat it. If Daniel refused, they will kill him. You know how Daniel now did this one? In his own case, he made friend with one of the senior men and told that senior man, nah, don't forget, that senior man loved him so much. And see, I cannot divide myself with the king's food. What can you do to help me? Ah, the man said, if after uh, uh, 10 days, uh, you don't look okay, and I allow you to not to eat, and you look thin, the king will kill me, but let's try it for 10 days. Hello? Now, if you look at that scripture clearly, look up. Whenever you notice that your faith is going to contradict some customs that will cause you havoc, you know what? Look for somebody in the family that you can win to yourself. Somebody that has voice. That when it is time for you to declare your son, there will be somebody that can speak on your behalf. When I wanted to get married to my wife, we were young. Nobody saw it coming. Her family didn't accept. But I, I was close to the mom. It was the mom that helped me to tell the I remember that time we, we got to their house. I bought ever wine. Nice one, the expensive ever, original ever. As we got to their family house, I presented it to the dad. The dad took it inside the room. And after five minutes, came out and said to his wife, Which means they have brought the blood tonic you'll be drinking. I put it at the door of your room. Ah! And they went out. My mother-in-law said, Is it not shinap you bought? I said, No, ma. Ah, he won't take it. The only thing that can open his heart eh, is Shina. She put her hand in her bag to give me money. I said, Mommy, I have money. He said, Go to that place now, go and buy Shina. So I went to buy Shina. I presented it to her. And the Baba was always singing him, but you won't hear. You're, mm, 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 All of a sudden, we heard him singing and coming again. Utimbo, oh, Utimbo. The mother said I should present. I presented to him. As he received it, eh, Kilebawa, that means, what have you come to do? I wanted to speak. Her mom just started speaking. That we want to travel out. Ah, I look at myself, travel out, care. That I have American visa in my hands and I want to marry this year so that I can take their daughter along to America. So you know what Baba said? America. Hello, America. That's, you want to go to America? Ah, there's no problem. We should go to Ibadan and tell their elder brother that he has given approval. They, they, they should give us date for introduction. Now, if I was not close to the mom, I wouldn't have been able to conquer that battle. If Daniel was not close to that eunuch, he wouldn't have been able to say, no, I won't eat the king's delicacies. If you are standing as a Christian and you know that hey, some customs will be against your stand, don't stand alone. Begin to look for somebody around. If it's an organization, look for somebody that you can befriend. If it's a family, look for somebody you can be close to. Somebody that by himself will use his own mouth to tell them that no, leave, uh, leave, leave pastor now. You people should not disturb pastor. Are you getting what I'm saying? If there was no, that man was not there, I'm th Daniel will eat the king's delicacy. If he refused, they will kill him. I say again, the lack of wisdom is the reason why so many Christians are mismanaging situations.
Now, let me share one experience with you. After my marriage, you know I'm an Ibadan man. And in Ibadan, our wives are like family slaves. If anybody is celebrating anything, even if you are not going to be there, you have to post your wife ahead. We have a name for them. We call them women in the house. So all the wives, they don't, they don't, in Ibadan, they don't, they don't employ caterers. It is the wives. I didn't want that kind of life for my own wife. You know what I did? I got close to my dad. Whenever uh, festive season is coming, I will send gifts to him and I will go ahead to tell him, ah, my wife, in fact, she's busy with her work and so many things. So whenever they are in family function and say, everybody say, where is pastor's wife? My dad will say, Forget about pastor's wife. She has my dad. We even my daddy had to lie to tell them that she's in the university. Ten years ago, imagine. Oh, she oh, she course. Oh, she she's doing one course. That's her uh, pastor. She course. Uh, she program. Uh. I don't know. What I'm don't cause problem for yourself. Don't let them abuse our faith. Don't let them because of. They be thinking that it's because you gave your life to Christ, that's why you are no longer relevant in the family. Throughout, she, till my daddy died, he kept covering my wife because I have parleyed with him. Are you learning something at all? I wrote it here. So I won my dad over with gifts and friendships and he didn't used to bother my wife. In fact, when they now make the money, you know, all those wives, they will put crap on the floor. People will be giving them money when they come for occasion. They used to give me my wife's portion. They, they all know that she have him, she's having program. So, oh yeah, oh pastor, they will give me to go and give her to me. You can manage custom. Even if your father is, a, is an imam and you want to marry in the church, there's somebody you have to befriend in the family. That will know how to play the ball for you. It's not everything that you will pray. Ah, yeah, yeah, let's pray. Let's command his heart. Let's commit his heart to the end of the law. Let us pray that God should change his heart. Touch his heart. Some people up till today, there's one popular man of God. He's still a bachelor till this morning. You know why? Many years ago, they said he came to church and told them the sister, God said he will marry. And God said he must not go back. To front. This is the sister he has suggesting. And after announcing, the father of the sister and the mother of the sister said, only it's over their dead body that he will marry their daughter. The man is in, in his 40s now. The father of the lady, of the lady has just said, no. He preaches all over the world. Up to now, they still say, the whole church know him as his wife-to-be. The father is still saying, and he himself came to the church to preach. That when parents oppose a relationship, you have to wait. He has preached all these messages before his own happen. So he has no option. But me, I always say there is always a way. Third case, because every case cannot have the same formula. You see, the first one, wisdom came in. The second one, friendship came in. In the third one, there's no time to read. In Daniel chapter 3, it's very long, 3 to 30. The case of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, that one, force was applied. If you don't bow down to this idol, we will cast you into the fire. That one, force was applied. At times when custom, when your culture contradicts your faith, you can be forceful at times. I won't do this thing. But before you apply force, you must have tried wisdom. You must have tried friendship. Because I believe 
Daniel was in the palace when Shadrach and Meshach and Abednego refused to bow. They must have talked to Daniel. Maybe the king didn't listen to Daniel. The king said, Daniel, you are in Zemtha. You are out of it. You already know your God. So they are to apply force. There are times to apply force. But who tells you what to do part time? Allow the Holy Spirit to lead you. And please subject yourself to, for counseling. Sir, this is what I'm going to. What should I do? I think it was when Dickness Kevin was getting married. The daddy wanted them to marry a Muslim way. Abi, was it not your own? I think he did nikah in your own. Eh? Was your dad still alive? Okay, he wasn't alive. It was the father's family that came up. I can't remember how it happened again. And the way it was going, I said, allow them to do. Whatever they do, we can nullify. So are you wiser now? Are you sure? So you can manage culture now. Can you imagine? They said in a culture, hey, if a, somebody, uh, somebody died in the family, they will, all the women, women will shave their hair. There's way to it. There's way to everything. Just allow the Holy Spirit to lead you. Do we have any questions before we go to the communion? Any questions? I want to give room for questions. Before we... Yes. Please get us a mic. This airport's amplified. Okay, thank you. Praise the Hallelujah. Uh, my question is that in my family, let me just put it my family. Oh, my husband's family. There's one I do the, the worshiping. And every Every of them, like all people in the family, they will go and bow down for that thing and they will do some sacrifices for that thing. And that thing will not, they will do like carry far, go there. Then they will do something. If you are doing farm, if you are working in the office or like that, you will go there. You will spring that blood, you will speak, uh, speak something. Then if you go there, maybe you are sad or your farm is not going well, that thing will make your farm to be grow or if you lost your job they will call you once who does that thing so there is my my in-law the father to my husband he said that he will not do this he will not do such a thing they force him they do something that he will do but he said he will not do it recently now everything about him his change all his wealth everything is equal to zero now and they say that until he do that thing that is not going to be normal his wet and now the person in charge of that thing the person have died okay the person have died now my my in-law is old now and the thing is affecting my husband what can we do that's a very powerful question now number one that culture has demonic undertone because of the sacrifices involved and see when I, 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 the man that refused to do it, that things have gone down for, the devil only took back what he gave him. When Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego decided not to follow the instruction of the king, they were cast into the fire. It was right in the fire that Jesus intervened. One thing with the devil is that if you, if you cut your bargain with him, he will take everything he has given. So now that the man is dead, your husband, the first thing he should do is to give his life to Christ. God cannot become your God until you first take him as your God. He won't fight your fight until you take him as your God. So once you take him as your God, 
that he has given his life to Christ, the next thing for him is to disconnect himself. That's what many people don't do. You disconnect yourself in prayers from that link. Now, once he makes a, a, a declaration, I am disconnected from that link. I'll give this example. Every time I go to bab my hair or my son's hair, because it is only two of us that bab our hair in the family, they say these barbers, they use people's hair. Abby, anytime we, we finish barbing, we don't pack it. I only pray, Father, whatsoever that has left us, I disconnect our destinies from. Every single time I go to bab my hair or my son's hair, I pray, Lord, all this hair that fall off now, we disconnect our destinies from it, may it not have a connection to us again. So when that person take it anywhere, it's empty. Do you understand? So what your husband should do is he should give his life to Christ. Two, he should disconnect himself from that source. The third thing, let him devote his life to Jesus and you'll see how Jesus will bless him. We also came from families that things, similar things like that occur. We disconnected ourselves. The Bible says, therefore, if a man be in Christ, who is he? New creature. All things have passed away. All things have become new. And most of them, when they have the mindset that this thing is what is blessing us, ah, if we disconnect, if we disconnect, we will not be blessed again. It will happen like that. The source of every good thing is God. Did I answer your question? Any other question? Before we go to the communion. 